Sava Jaya Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Jaya Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Vallabha Jaya Giri Varadhari Jaya Giri Varadhari Gopi Jana Vallabha Jaya Giri Varadhari Jaya Giri Speaking uh, connected to a famous uh, uh, verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto, uh, when uh, uh, Lord Brahma uh, offers prayers to uh, to Sri Krishna, and uh, I will share the uh, the verse. Just a moment. So here it is. Uh, this is 10th canto, 14th chapter, uh, verse 8. Tate nu kampam susamik shaman. Sorry, I, I didn't uh, actually try which, <laughs> which melody fits for this verse. Oh, okay. Tate nu kampam susamik shamano. Bunjana eva makritam vipakam, ritva vapulpir, vidadan namaste, jiveta yo mukti pade sadaya bad. Srila Prabhupada's translation. Uh, my dear Lord, one who earnestly waits for you to bestow your causeless mercy upon him, all the while patiently suffering the reactions of his past misdeeds and offering you respectful obeisances with his heart, words, and body, is surely eligible for liberation, for it has become his rightful claim. Srila Prabhupada's purport. Srila Sridhar uh, uh, Swami explains in his commentary that just as a leg legitimate uh, son has uh, has to simply remain alive to gain an, an inheritance from his father, one who simply remains alive in Krishna consciousness, following the regulative principles of Bhakti Yoga, automatically becomes eligible to receive the mercy of the personality of Godhead. In other words, he will be promoted to the kingdom of God. The word uh, Samik Shamana uh, indicates that a devotee earnestly awaits 
the mercy of the Supreme Lord, even while suffering the painful effects of previous sinful activities. Lord Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita that a devotee who fully surrenders to him is no longer liable uh, to suffer the reactions of his previous karma. However, because in his mind, the devotee may still maintain the remnants of his uh, previous sinful mentality, the Lord removes the last uh, vestiges of the enjoying spirit by giving his devotee punishments that may sometimes re resemble sinful reactions. The purpose, purpose of the entire creation of God is to rectify the living entity's tendency to enjoy, <clears throat> to enjoy uh, without, the, without the Lord, and therefore the particular punishment given for, uh, given for a sinful activity is specifically designed to curtail the mentality that produced the activity. Although a devotee has surrendered to the Lord, a Lord's devotional service, until he is completely perfect in Krishna consciousness, he may, he may maintain a slight inclination to enjoy the false happiness of this world. The Lord therefore creates a particular situation to eradicate this remaining enjoying spirit. This unhappiness suffered by a sincere devotee is not technically a karmic reaction. It is rather the Lord's special mercy for inducing his devotee to completely let go uh, the material world and return home back to Godhead. A sincere devotee earnestly desires to go back to the Lord's abode. Therefore, he willingly accepts the Lord's merciful punishment and continues uh, offering respects and obeisances to the Lord with, with his heart, words, and body. Such a bona fide servant of the Lord, considering all hardship, a small price to pay for gaining the personal association of the Lord, certainly becomes a legitimate son of God, as indicated here by the words diabak. Just as one cannot approach the sun without becoming fire, one cannot approach the Supreme Lord, uh, Supreme, Supreme Pure Lord Krishna, without undergoing a rigid purificatory, purificatory process, which may appear like suffering, but which is in fact a curative treatment administered by the personal hand of the Lord. Om Magyanati Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshuru Militan Hena Tasmai Shri Gurate Namaha Nama Om Vishnupadaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srihmate Bhaktivedanta Svamini Tinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Guravani Pucharine Neha Vishesha Shunyavadi Pashtyatade Shatarine Jashi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Hadveta Gadatara Shiva Sade Gora Bhaktavrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Uh, so this uh, verse actually, uh, if we, uh, it, it contains a lot, really. There are different, different directions uh, which uh, we could uh, go and uh, explore the depths uh, of the deep, uh, really deep philosophy. Um, I thought that uh, I would uh, emphasize or, or discover the part uh, which, uh, which is about uh, this uh, patiently suffering the, re the reaction of uh, his past misde uh, misdeeds. Uh, because suffering is uh, unde undeniably part of our lives and uh, it's, uh, it's really important how we understand uh, this suffering and how we react to this suffering. Because uh, our reactions uh, will bring future results and uh, it's really important what are these results. Uh, also, it's uh, one interesting topic uh, which used to come, uh, come up when, when devotees preach because many people think that uh, there is no possibility that there is God because if there is a God who, uh, wish, who is the well-wisher of uh, everyone, then uh, how, could, how could be, uh, how could there be so much suffering in the world and there are so many good people who are suffering and how it is possible. So, so it's really, really, really an important part of our lives. 
so I, I thought that uh, I would discover this uh, a little bit. And uh, I would like to share a, a PowerPoint with you. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think I will just leave it like this because uh, then I, I can switch easily uh, here and uh, also see my notes. <laughs> so uh, usually when, uh, when we judge the situations which uh, happen to us, uh, we, we just have a tendency to see the current situation in the present and uh, not bother with the past and the future. But every situation we get into, uh, it has a whole life. So it's not just one moment or, or a limited uh, amount of time in our life, but uh, it has a reason coming from the past and an afterlife in the future. So it's, it's uh, important to understand this because then uh, we can see properly uh, the present. Um, I mean, to, to understand uh, what's happening and uh, based on understanding, having a proper consciousness and based on consciousness, uh, having a proper reaction. And based on how we react, uh, we can invoke uh, auspicious uh, future and, uh, or consequences or inauspicious consequences. So it's very important how we see things and uh, how we react. So let's just discover, uh, starting from the past. Uh, so we know that every situation we get into uh, has a reason. Uh, here in the purport, we could read that, uh, that uh, when someone is fully surrendered to the Lord, then there is no karma uh, afterwards. But uh, it's a good question who is fully surrendered. So, I mean, I wouldn't say, for example, I would be fully surrendered, maybe probably to some extent, but fully surrendered is a high state, high level. Uh, so so I, I think at least I speak on my account, uh, I definitely have bad karma, which comes from the past. And, uh, it's so easy to think that, uh, yeah, I'm a good person. I don't deserve all the bad things happening to me. But uh, we know uh, that uh, our, the way how we perceive things around us is limited. For example, Srila Prabhupada writes in the in, in Ishopanishad uh, introduction there, that there, there are these uh, four defects uh, in material life, starting with uh, our senses are imperfect. And uh, when uh, we, we perceive some, uh, things somehow, but we perceive it in an incorrect way, so obviously we will be illusioned. That's the second one. So also the, the mind doesn't see things the way they are. Uh, also, if we cannot uh, properly see our reality, it's, uh, it's inevitable that we will commi commit mistakes. And uh, also the fourth one is that uh, we will have this cheating pro uh, propensity. Uh, sometimes it's because we just want to cover up all the, all the mistakes uh, we, we made. So based on the first three, uh, so it's, it's nice to, to think that, uh, yeah, I'm a good person. Many, many people think like that, that, yeah, I'm a good person. Uh, others are not not so kind, not so good as I am, but uh, but I am I am good. I, I remember once I, I talked to my brother. Uh, he's sort of a businessman, but uh, the, the system is that uh, they have uh, kind of a comp competition with their colleagues. So sometimes they they have some nasty ways of doing things to cheat one another, you know, to get more profit than the other. And uh, I remember that one, on one occasion, uh, he, he started to tell how, how others uh, do their, their job and it, it's not so nice, not so, um, how to say, pious. <laughs> and and I, I, uh, thought, I just asked him that, uh, and, 
and how, how, how you do things. Yeah, yeah, but I, I do things some way, but I come home and, and uh, it's just, you know, like, like, like an actor play, uh, has, has his play and uh, I'm different actually. So it was interesting that uh, uh, he saw that, yeah, I do some nasty things maybe, but it's not me. I'm the one who I'm at home and I'm a kind person, but they are those nasty people. But probably, you know, they are also the same that at home they are totally different and don't use those, those tricks. So uh, uh, what I, I wanted to, to say that uh, first, uh, we don't see properly our uh, actions our, and our intentions. And obviously we don't see others uh, uh, actions because at least we, we see our intentions, but we don't see others intentions. So, so it's actually quite an illusion that I, I don't uh, cause any harm to others because I do, uh, most of us do. Uh, I also remember one, one situation that I, I was uh, sitting on a bus and it uh, arrived to a bus stop. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I was just, just looking out the window and I could see that there was some small uh, black spot uh, moving on the ground, some kind of bug. And from the opposite way, uh, some, uh, there was a man coming with big steps and I could see that uh, they will meet. So actually it happened. And uh, the, the man stepped on, on that black spot and you know, it was moving till then, but after the man just walked away, the spot was just staying at one place. So, you know, I saw this and, uh, and I, I was thinking that, yeah, there, there was one living being who just, just left his body, left, uh, left its body, and uh, just nobody noticed, especially not the one who caused it. Uh, and this is uh, our life, that we just go doing things, doing things, doing things, but we don't see the consequences. Uh, we don't see how, how much harm we can, uh, we can do to others. Obviously, there is the other way around also that sometimes... Uh, we, uh, we do good to others, but uh, that used to be more likely a conscious thing, not, not like this. So we can cause harm unconsciously many, many times. And uh, there is also uh, the other thing that, uh, yeah, we may remember uh, this one life, even this one life, we, we don't, uh, uh, don't really remember all of it. We forget so many things, but uh, we don't remember past lives. What, what, what did we do uh, in those lives? And I very much like this story about uh, uh, Maharaj Dhritarashtra, uh, when, when he spoke to uh, Lord Krishna after uh, this uh, battle of Kurukshetra. And, uh, and he was really, really sad uh, about uh, losing his sons and, uh, and asked Krishna why this happened. And Krishna taught, taught him that um, 50 lives before, uh, Dhritarashtra was a, a king, uh, a really, really, really merciless king. And one day he went to the forest and, uh, and saw a bird. So he taught his, uh, his servants to, uh, to make this uh, um, bird blind to to harm uh, his, uh, its eyes and, uh, and to kill uh, all, all its, um, its hundred uh, children, little birds. So little Astra was really surprised, but uh, immediately the, the question came that, okay, okay, uh, if I did this, uh, I might, might have deserved this, but why did I have to wait 50 lifetimes? So Krishna thought that uh, it's not so easy to have uh, 100 uh, children uh, in, in our life. So uh, in the last 50 years, he had to collect the sufficient uh, good karma to have um, uh, 100 child uh, who had to die uh, like, uh, like the birds uh, children before. So 
based on this story, we can see that the ways of karma is uh, really, really difficult. Uh, we, can, we cannot possibly understand uh, what, what might be the reason for, for the consequences we have to suffer. But, uh, but it's sure, uh, surely there is a reason uh, for what, uh, what we, we get. So this is about the, the past, uh, about the future. Uh, so in, in case of non-devotees, it's obvious that uh, everything is karma, they have to suffer. But in case of devotees, uh, it's not just karma. Krishna also steps into the devotee's life and, uh, and teaches the devotee, like we could read in the purport. Uh, in the purport, uh, Srila Prabhupada wrote that um, uh, so we can get uh, rid of the remnants of, uh, of previous sinful mentality and also the enjoying spirit. So the purpose of all what's happening to us devotees uh, is to, to rectify uh, the living entity's uh, tendency to enjoy uh, without the, the Lord. And, uh, and this is actually the special mercy of the Lord. So sometimes we don't like to see difficult situations uh, and hardships as, as uh, mercy. Uh, it's easier to, uh, uh, to, to think something uh, as mercy when, when we get some, some nice service or, or nice arrangements in our lives. But, uh, but because uh, in difficulties we can turn to the Lord even more, it's really, really special mercy. And, and we see that, uh, that this, this material life really is something which we don't want. So, so it's, it's special mercy. And uh, I, I liked very much uh, the story which uh, Guru Maharaj uh, spoke uh, about this, uh, this farmer who, uh, who refused to, to uh, think of a certain situation as good luck or bad luck, that uh, there was a, um, an old uh, farmer and uh, he had a, a son. One, uh, one, one only son, and uh, they had a, a horse. And uh, they used the horse to, to, to this farming, to their farming activities. So uh, one day the, the horse escaped and uh, all the people from the village came to the, the farmer that, oh, how unfortunate you are because uh, now this uh, season is coming that you would need uh, this horse on the fields, but, but it's gone. Uh, what will you do? Oh, how unfortunate. But the farmer only said that good luck, bad luck, who knows, and didn't really care about it. So a few days passed and the horse came back with uh, other wild horses. Then the villagers again came, oh, how fortunate you are. Now you have even more horses. So you can, uh, you can have bigger land uh, and, and you can uh, sell all, all, uh, all the, uh, the crops you, you won't need and, and uh, you will become rich. And the farmer didn't really bother, good luck, bad luck, who knows, and, and just continued to do his work. Uh, a few days later, uh, his son tried to, uh, to oh, what is the word? To tame, tame the, the white, uh, white horses. And, uh, and uh, when he tried to jump, jump on the horse, uh, he, he fell down and uh, his leg was broken. So again, the villagers came that, oh, poor, poor man, uh, how unfortunate you are. Now you have to do it all alone. There is, there is so much work. How will you do it without your son? But the farmer just continued, oh, good luck, bad luck, who knows? And uh, didn't bother uh, with, with that at all. Uh, then a little bit later, the king's uh, man came because uh, there was a war with another country. So they came for, for all the, the young men in the village to, to take them to be soldiers. So they took everybody except uh, this boy because it, its leg was, was broken. So again, the villagers <laughs> came to the farmer that, oh, how, for, how fortunate you are that uh, you have your son. 
uh, all the others who knows who will come back and who, who won't, but, but you will have uh, your son. So the farmer again, good luck, bad luck, who knows? So this is actually a great example uh, in our life because uh, we also uh, don't know if uh, something uh, in, in some kind of difficulty in our, uh, in our life we uh, bring uh, good results or bad results. We just have this, uh, this idea that if something happens to me in this, this moment, which, which feels bad, then the consequences will be bad. But, uh, but it's not like this, especially because uh, we have uh, uh, Krishna's promise that uh, he will take care of uh, everyone who surrenders to him. Uh, so, so it's not, uh, not that obvious that it will be bad. And uh, yeah, we, we try to, to see the future, try to estimate it, what will come and try to control it, but it's not possible. Uh, and uh, yeah, so, so that's it. And uh, yeah, we got to the second part, this present. Uh, so we spoke about past and future but uh, we didn't speak about the present. And actually this is the most important of the three because it will uh, determine uh, what will be the future actually. And uh, there is something important to understand that uh, we have to have a proper consciousness because um, actually uh, it's not the circumstances which will cause the sufferings. Uh, here this, uh, the feelings mean suffering in this case. Uh, so it, it's not the result of the circumstances. Uh, it's result of uh, consciousness and also uh, it can be the result of a reaction. So uh, we can see things differently, uh, what happened in, in our life. And, uh, and uh, based on that, the mind will react somehow. And actually the mind is uh, what causes uh, the suffering. But how the mind will act, you know, to, to be a friend or, or a foe, uh, it's uh, the reason for that to decide which one will be is previous training. So I, it was very interesting um, that uh, in the weekend, uh, Bhutta Bhavana Prabhu gave this, uh, this class to, to African devotees. And he said something interesting that uh, when there are these peaceful, uh, peaceful times in our life, uh, lives, uh, we like to, um, you know, it's peaceful, it's nice, uh, so we relax. And then uh, after some time come, come the difficulty. Uh, so we have to react properly and, uh, and we have to solve that situation in that time. But actually uh, in those peaceful periods of time, uh, we should use those times to prepare for the difficulties. So I very much liked this, uh, this thought because I, I have a tendency to commit this, <laughs> to do this mistake. And, uh, and yeah, that's, uh, that's why it's so important how we do our sadhana, uh, but how we do our services. And uh, also there is uh, another thing some time ago, I don't know, a few months ago, maybe, uh, in, in our God family WhatsApp list, uh, um, someone shared this, uh, this uh, quote from Sachin Andan Swami. It will be three pages here. So it's just uh, the introduction that uh, Sachin Andan Swami made this list, uh, which, which helps him to move forward in, in times of struggle. So that's why, uh, why I, I underlined this, because uh, after I started to read this, this list, I, I could see that this list contains some kind of priorities. But, uh, but it was very interesting for me that um, uh, to use it in times of struggle, because this seemed to me uh, more likely a, a gen general priorities, not like connected to a certain situation. So I will uh, show you this, uh, this inspiration list. So it contains things like, uh, yeah, it's, it's just, uh, no, not three slides, just two, this is the second one. So like chant with absor uh, absorption, knowing Krishna listens to the voice of your chanting, 
release the stream at Bhagavatam every day and share what struck you uh, with others. Let go of your fear, surrender by consciously choosing small acts for the pleasure of the Lord. Uh, you build a strong bridge to sur a bridge of surrender that uh, eventually brings you to him. Listen to the saints every day. So like uh, you can see this, listen to the saints every day. So it's not connected to uh, really to a, a certain situation, but, uh, but I started to think that, yeah, it makes sense that uh, if we have this kind of inspiration, this, maybe this one or a different one, which is more personalized for us, uh, which, uh, which is about our general lifestyle, uh, all the time uh, showing us, us what is important. It might help to cultivate uh, a lifestyle which prepares us for the difficulties. So uh, the way how we deal with hardships in our lives, it doesn't uh, depend only on that certain limited amount of time we face the hardships, but obviously the times before when we prepared for it. So um, yeah, I, I, uh, I really had this wow <laughs> type of moment after hearing all this. And uh, uh, connected, to, uh, connected to the future, uh, to the present, uh, there are two things which are important. The first is how we see how we perceive, how we understand the situation. Uh, I would call that this is the input. And the other is how we react. This is the output. <laughs> Sorry, I came from uh, IT background, so I like this kind of uh, words. So uh, about what is the input, how we see things, how we perceive and understand things. So hearing is really important. And uh, one important thing in this, uh, this regard is uh, what uh, Krishna says in uh, Bhagavad Gita, uh, chapter two, verse 23, that uh, the soul can never be cut to pieces by any weapon, uh, nor burned by fire, nor moistened by water, nor withered by the wind. And also another thing is that uh, it's not just uh, that uh, we are in our original form, we are indestructible. <laughs> But, uh, but we are, uh, so not that uh, negative things cannot happen to us really, but uh, we, we are in a positive uh, state uh, originally because we are such ananda, uh, we have a such an ananda nature. So it's not that uh, we live eternally, not just that, but uh, we have uh, full knowledge and full bliss. So, this is our original state. And uh, all the suffering, all the enjoying, everything just comes from the mind. So if we can tame our mind and make it our friend, then difficulties will be somewhat different. We, we won't see them the same, same way. And um, yeah, that's it. That, that's, uh, now I would like to share this, uh, this video. It's from uh, Radhanath Swami. It's some, to some extent, it's about uh, this uh, suffering and also a few other topics uh, are, are uh, mentioned in it. But for me, it was really, really inspiring. Uh, so I thought of sharing it. Uh, let's see how it will work out. Oh, share sound, I have it, okay. A truly happy person does not find his or her happiness in the ever-changing circumstances that surround them. This is a problem with the way people perceive life. We're seeking happiness in all sorts of temporary fleeting experiences that are so often beyond our control. Real happiness is not determined by the external situation. It's a state of mind. It's a consciousness. It is what is within ourselves. Yoga means harmony. It's to harmonize the body with the mind, with the very living force of who we are. And through this process, to harmonize our consciousness with all of nature and with the conscious force that is within all living beings. It is in that harmony 
that we find true happiness. Because that harmony is eternal. It's unchanging. The concept of unity and diversity. There is limitless diversity and that diversity is wonderful because it provokes and it invokes opportunities to go deeper and deeper within ourselves. It provides opportunities for relationships, but for those relationships to truly bring about the happiness of the heart, it's important to experience the unity within all of this diversity. When we understand that harmony and the negative apparent things that we see, we begin to realize that that is on the level of the ego, on the level of the illusions of disconnect from the joy of the soul. I have seen people on their deathbeds whose bodies were wracked with pain who are truly the happiest people in the world. Because in that situation, they were seeking the happiness within and they discovered it. We can find that even in our healthiest states. Whether we're rich, whether we're poor, whether we're healthy, whether we're diseased, whatever our situation is, to find the harmony of the heart with the hearts of all beings, with the hearts of creation, is true happiness. Uh, so the reason uh, I, I wanted, I really wanted to to share this uh, video was uh, that short part uh, which uh, you could hear that. Uh, when uh, Maharaj said that he saw people, uh, per, people who, who were suffering on their deathbed, and even in that moment, it was possible to find happiness. And uh, from this whole video, that was the, that short part, which, which really, really, really struck me that, oh, wow, it's possible. So, so even in, that, in, in such extreme state, it's possible to be happy. So this is the power of the mind, actually, if, if the mind is uh, our, our uh, good friend. And uh, just to, to make uh, an, um, an, a simple example, I've heard once that uh, just imagine one, one boy uh, in, uh, in school who, who has this, uh, this dream that he wants to be an astronaut sometime. But uh, there are some conditions of who can be an astronaut and uh, uh, they have to be between uh, 150 and 190 centimeters high. So if there is this boy who is uh, two meters high, so it's, it's just great suffering for him because how to be shorter, you know? So, so he cannot be what, he really dreamt, dreamt of uh, for so many years. But there is another boy who is the same, who has the same height, but uh, he wants to be a basketball player, <laughs> you know. So for him, it won't be a problem at all. So he will be happy because for a basketball player, two meter, being two meters high, it's, it's sort of a, I have to say, benediction. <laughs> so, so this is uh, how the mind can work. So the way we perceive and, and digest things around us, it will, um, uh, it will determine our, our consciousness. And uh, uh, yeah, I think I spoke of this and uh, yeah, this, this is uh, one verse from uh, Bhagavad Gita which uh, speaks about this process, how, how this works, uh, how this satisfaction works, which is, uh, you know, we know that this is, <laughs> satisfaction is the austerity of the mind. So in the stage of perfection called trance or samadhi, one's mind is completely restrained from material mental activities by practice of yoga. This Perfection is characterized by one's ability to see the self by the pure mind and to relish and rejoice in the self. In that joyous state, uh, one is situated in boundless transcendental happiness realized through transcendental senses. 
established thus, one never departs from the truth and upon gaining uh, this, he thinks there is no greater gain. Being situated in such a position, one is never shaken, even in the midst of uh, greatest difficulty. This indeed is actual freedom from all miseries arising from material contact. So uh, I highlight, highlighted two things. Uh, this mind is completely restrained from material mental activities. So we are uh, detached from material sense objects and uh, see the self by the pure mind. So we see our, our, uh, our real uh, identity. So it really comes, to, comes back to this, uh, this short statement, which uh, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, that no one can harm you if you don't harm yourself. So this is uh, the uh, summary of this part. And uh, the last part is uh, how to react. You know, uh, I, I don't want to, uh, to go more into this. Uh, probably you have heard this, uh, this conversation of, uh, of Krishna and Karna. Uh, if not, I just uh, show, show the uh, screen share. Uh, so the, this, this one. Uh, so basically, Karna is complaining to Krishna about uh, his situation, why he had to do the things which he, he, he did, uh, trying to, to reason that uh, it was OK for him uh, to do improper, impious things. And uh, Krishna replies uh, and explains uh, his own situation which was actually no better than Karna's situation, but, uh, but the reaction, how we reacted to things was uh, different. So Krishna says that uh, it's just uh, excuses uh, from Karna, uh, what, what happened to him that um, to, to make an excuse why he did uh, things which are not, uh, not, not pious. So, so yeah, life is not fair on anybody. Uh, actually, uh, this is why I'm not really sure how, how it's uh, uh, bonified in this, this uh, state because we know that life is actually fair. <laughs> so, but we, we, may, uh, we may see it as not fair. And, uh, And uh, yeah, so people many times ask why, why bad things happen to good people. And uh, uh, in one class, Shubha Vilas Prabhu spoke about this topic and he said that uh, there is actually even a better question than this. The better question is that what happens to good people when bad things happen to them? And uh, he said that uh, they grow. They... they uh, yeah, they grow, <laughs> that's the short, short answer. So actually, uh, good people become even better people because uh, they react properly uh, in bad situations, which uh, takes them in a, in a more auspicious uh, direction. And uh, that is uh, why it's important how we react, because uh, that will determine which way we will go uh, forward. And uh, I just collected a few things, what, what we can do in these kind of situations. And, uh, and uh, that will be almost the, the end of uh, um, this, uh, this presentation. So one thing obviously which uh, we can do is that we tolerate. Many times we don't even have any other chance. So, so it's uh, one very basic thing. Uh, another thing is that uh, we can uh, make some material adjustments. Uh, we can uh, ask a few things about it uh, because, uh, you know, sometimes uh, we think that, oh, there is no point doing anything because, uh, because if I deserve it, it will be the same. <laughs> but uh, one, one important thing is that if I can tolerate, uh, because, yeah, if I can tolerate and it's purification, it's nice. But uh, for example, if I have uh, some argument with someone, that's the difficulty and uh, 
shall I just uh, tolerate this argument or, or just avoid that poor person? So we have to ask ourselves if, if we can tolerate, because if we cannot, then, uh, then some adjustments uh, might help. And uh, also, uh, one important thing that uh, if we can do anything at all to change the situation. And uh, in one class from Ulmina Mataji, I've heard one a very interesting thing that, uh, for example, when, uh, when we cut our finger, that is a small difficulty. So it's not that big of a suffering, but a nice example. So we can leave it like bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. Or we can uh, go to the to, from take from the drawer a band-aid and put it on the finger. So that's uh, actually some kind of material adjustment uh, which we can do. But uh, it's coming. It's also coming from Krishna because intelligence uh, to to have this thought that oh yeah I should put on a put on a band-aid, and uh, also that if you have this band-aid in the drawer, so. Uh, still, if, uh, if I have to have this suffering for bleeding, 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 it depends on Krishna, actually. But uh, if I can do these materi material adjustments, it depends on him. So we can try and, uh, and we can see if, uh, if we succeed or not. Also, another uh, interesting point in this, that... Um, uh, just uh, this weekend, I, I started to listen to, um, there was a, a discussion uh, between uh, Shivanam Maharaj and uh, Chiti uh, Shakti Mataji uh, about uh, mind and soul, you know, spirituality and uh, psychology, things like this. And uh, one interesting topic came up that uh, there are people who, are, who have uh, mental health issues. So we know that uh, chanting the holy name is, uh, is a really auspicious uh, spiritual thing and, uh, and helps, uh, can help us in all regard. So should we just uh, tell these people that chant the holy name and, uh, and everything will be fine? And uh, Shivara Maharaj said that uh, we have to understand that, uh, yeah, if, uh, if we chant with pure love, uh, pure consciousness, Shudanam, the holy name, uh, it can, uh, the holy name solves all our problems and uh, helps us uh, in all regard. But uh, most of us, uh, many of us, are not on that level. So material arrangement, uh, arrangements can help us to, to get to such a state when we can uh, practice uh, spiritual life in a, in a better quality. So this way, uh, it's, uh, you know, the two works together. So it's not just, okay, we just chant and do nothing else because different kinds of uh, processes help each other to be more efficient. So, uh, so yeah, we can also use uh, these material adjustments. Also, we can uh, seek uh, guidance, support, uh, because uh, that also comes from Krishna. So if he wants to, to send uh, proper guidance, he sends. If uh, we have to uh, deal with the situation without that, then we won't find, <laughs> find it. But, uh, but uh, that's also a possibility. Uh, also, we can pray to the Lord. Uh, also, we can chant. It's not that uh, if I cannot chant Shutanam, uh, then I, <laughs> I don't want to chant or I don't have to chant. Uh, so whenever I, I feel I can cry to the Lord uh, with uh, chanting his holy names. And also we can pray, obviously uh, not demanding <laughs> help from the Lord, but uh, in the way Shila Prabhupada taught us. And uh, yeah, uh, when, whenever we have difficulties, uh, if we, uh, we live it uh, in, a, in a proper consciousness, then it can change our, our world, world view. So we can get realizations because, you know, we, uh, we read things from the Shastra, we understand it, but when we apply it and face uh, difficult situations, then realizations can come. 
And also this last point uh, that uh, when, uh, when this whole pandemic thing started uh, and Guru Maharaj uh, started this daily course, uh, many times he, he emphasized that a devotee uh, being in whatever situation, uh, whatever hardships, uh, devotee can find how to use it in Krishna's service. So, so if it's also a possibility to, to find a way, okay, I'm sick now, then I, I cannot go to the temple so much, I cannot do so, cannot do so much uh, uh, practical service, how to say, but now I can read more, I can chant more, uh, I can do other type of things. So, you know, service have, has uh, different angas, so, it's nice that uh, that we can all, all the time find uh, find a way uh, which one to uh, to do. And uh, one uh, very short uh, last point that uh, for inspiration we can always go back to these uh, great source uh, examples how they uh, how, how they handled difficulties. It's very inspiring to, to read Kunti Devi's uh, prayers uh, because she, she saw difficulties uh, like, uh, like a possibility to be, uh, uh, be closer to Krishna. Also, uh, we can, uh, we can uh, see these this different kind of examples, how, how other great souls tolerated their, their uh, sufferings. And uh, I would like to share one last story, and uh, that's really, <laughs> really the, the end. Uh, uh, that uh, once there was uh, there was a great devotee of, uh, of Krishna, and uh, he had um, he had great great uh, sickness, and uh, he was all alone. And uh, Krishna, uh, the story didn't say it, but I think uh, it was. Uh, Based on the story, I, I think it was his uh, deity form, but I'm not really sure. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm not really sure about that part. But anyway, uh, Krishna uh, saw his situation and uh, day by day he visited this devotee and, uh, and took care of him, you know, washed his clothes, prepared food for him and so many other things. And uh, after some time, uh, Rukmini Devi, <laughs> Notice that uh, Krishna is uh, uh, each day he's disappearing to somewhere, and uh, so she asked about uh, about it. Uh, so, my dear Lord, where do you go each each and every day uh, when you disappear from here? And uh, Krishna explained the situation that I have a devotee. He's uh, he's a very uh, a very nice devotee, and he's uh, sick, and uh, I, I take care of him. And Rukmini was really uh, surprised that uh, I, I really don't understand this thing. Uh, you could uh, cure him with the, only the touch of your finger. Uh, instead, you are doing this, uh, this, uh, this kind of, how to say, lowly service for him. So why is it? And Krishna explained that, uh, my dear Rukmini, you, did, uh, you really uh, don't understand this uh, because uh, this devotee has to go through this suffering. Uh, if he doesn't, he has to take another body, uh, and then uh, he has to experience this, uh, this suffering. So instead of taking away his suffering, I help, uh, help him go through, uh, to go through this suffering. So for me, this, uh, this story is really, really encouraging uh, every time I remember, because it shows that, uh, that uh, even while we experience, experience difficulties, sufferings, uh, we, can, uh, we can be sure that Krishna is with us and, uh, and helps in whatever way uh, he can uh, to, to make the situation uh, bearable for us, I would say. And uh, so this way he, he helps, helps us towards uh, uh, towards him and uh, to go back to that head. So I'm really sorry it became really long. I didn't uh, think it would uh, take so much time. But uh, please, if you have any corrections, any uh, anything to add, any questions, realizations, uh, please just speak up. <laughs>
Thank you, Mataji, for a really, really great and wonderful class. I really loved it. Uh, full of so many inspirations. Uh, not only uh, you shared from Hijori Chandamuri Maharaj, but sorry, from uh, Sachin Maharaj, but you also shared from like so many other places. So many great examples, so many takeaway. Uh, so absolutely uh, great. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you for sharing this nectar. Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, if you have any questions, comments, or any relations, please do share. Uh, unmute yourself, or you can type in chat window. Hare Krishna, Radha Vinodri Mataji. Hare Krishna. I my humble obeisance to Salgar to share for Padan Guru Maharaj. Um, what a wonderful class, Mataji. You just as a power packed session today. Uh, very nice uh, class, Mataji. Thank you so much. Um, um, so I have to listen again for those points. Uh, I think I have to make a note, um, um, but uh, very nice class, Mataji. All good points you mentioned. I don't have any questions, Mataji. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for the encouragement. Mataji, can you share the uh, inspiration list of Sachinandan Maharaj? You. You, um... Yeah, uh, actually, I, I think uh, I have a link, uh, and that's that's the the best because uh, there is the original. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I will uh, send it into the chat now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, especially I like this point, like um, where you said, like when we are um, <clears throat> in suffering or in difficulties, uh, then only uh, good people grow more and become better. So and that uh, consciousness should be there. So I think, uh, so, but um, that uh, Krishna conscious helps us more uh, to be better person. If, if to, we don't have a Krishna conscious background, then definitely good people fall down and in the sufferings or in the difficulties. So that's what I understood, Mataji. And I also, I maybe not emphasize so much, but, uh, but in, in difficulties, uh, association of devotees can help so much, so, so, so much. Uh, yeah, sometimes in a practical way, sometimes just, uh, just uh, lift up our consciousness. Yes. So it's also such a such an important uh, point. Yeah. But usually, uh, devotees or uh, general people um, they don't uh, share when they are in difficulty. After everything is over, they'll share. I I noticed that that one um, because um, sometimes we don't know. Um, will not remember much of the friends or devotees we have in the time of difficulty. We'll see that happiness we can share easily, but when we have difficulties or suffering. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, I, I noticed a lot of devotees here in our uh, congregation or wherever I go. So they keep for themselves. After some time, when they when they come out of that difficulty, then only they'll express, oh, I, ha I had gone through this, all this, all that. But uh, if they are in a, at the time of difficulty, if they can share, then that will be the main help, I think. Um, that's the main. Yeah, one has to you know, have confidence and uh, um, get some association from the devotees so that um, they will be easily coming out of that from um, from that situation. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting what you say because, uh, for example, in Hungary uh, we have a mailing list, and mm -hmm. uh, so many times I see these emails coming, you know, uh, requesting for the devotees' prayers. Oh. But uh, yeah, obviously I don't know about many cases when devotees don't really share. Uh, I just think that, um, mm, how to say, it's just my, my feeling, maybe my, my speculation, but uh, sometimes we, we don't really understand how tricky Maya can be. Yes. And, uh, and, you know, when we just, uh, in slow steps, uh, going uh, downwards, it's, uh, we, we don't even notice. And, uh, and just to, to have some, some company, uh, even you know, sometimes it's it's just just to have company is enough. Uh, so don't even have to speak about big yeah. philosophy or, or guidance or anything. But um, uh, yeah, I I know that for example when I I mean I have difficulties. It's it's uh, difficult.
difficult for me to reveal to my mom because uh, every time he, he uh, she becomes so so frightened and you know it's it's so difficult to to have one one more thing <laughs> to deal with but uh, but yeah yeah i i think it's uh, it's nice to at least uh, to reveal it to few few people because uh, because uh, when we have uh, something on our weight, you know, to share it, it, it becomes less. It's just, yeah. I don't know. It's yeah, we'll so feel light uh, when we share it. Yeah, that's true. Yes, Mataji. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you for sharing this um, list also. Uh, oh, yeah, it's some, uh, someone, Sukhava uh, uh, um, Mataji writes that uh, slides, mm -hmm. uh, slides and video. For the video, uh, that's the easier one because it's on YouTube and I also, I can share the, uh, the link. Uh, about the slides, how, how can I send it? Uh, Mataji, if you can post it in the WhatsApp group. Um... God family WhatsApp group that will be fine. Okay, okay, okay. I I will do that. Mm hmm. Mm. So, uh, is there? A... Yes, Mathe, I'm also just looking for any questions. So, uh, Hare Krishna, Deva Devotees, if you have any questions, please unmute yourself. Looks like no further questions, Mataji, but I completely agree with Shimati Mataji. Fully power packed class today, one after another, take away golden bullets. So, <laughs> so many, absolutely. I, I have to admit that uh, for, for me, the, these classes are the easiest ones because uh, I, uh, I all the time have this difficulty with the time limit. <laughs> but uh, here, somehow, it's, uh, yeah. I think topic topic was very great, Mataji, in my personal view, because most of us um, really, when difficulties comes, we get bewildered, and we see that uh, highly elevated devotees, when difficulties comes to them, it's not that they are not getting difficulty. Even as you mentioned, Krishna also <laughs> countered that he has got so many. But even in this practical life, also, all the devotees, like uh, elevated devotee, also gets, but the way they respond is quite different. And the way they take it, and uh, like uh, like use that situation uh, still for uh, preaching Krishna consciousness in a positive way and handling it quite calmly, rather than reacting in a very uh, abrupt way. So this is something really like lot of lessons. Very good. So Mataji uh, looks sorry. Uh, it's just uh, one thing that. Uh, about this reaction, it's uh, also very, very interesting that uh, if, if we just take some time before reacting, it also can help because uh, sometimes we just want to react immediately and, uh, and some to give, give a few, few thoughts to it, uh, it, it can help to, to have a better reaction. <laughs> and it's, it's such a, an easy skill you know just to remember okay i don't have to do it immediately <laughs> yeah and especially when you mentioned why bad thing happens to good people and countering like why not like they are thinking what good things because there's a way mind works whenever some problem comes we say oh why these things are happening to me only but uh, whatever so many good things are happening we just ignore we feel uh, yeah it's like take it for granted that should be anyway part of my <laughs> yeah. um, so Okay, Mataji, it looks like we don't have any further questions. Uh, probably we can close the class today. Yeah, yeah, uh, of course. 
Yeah, and I, I will send this uh, PowerPoint to, to the WhatsApp group. Okay. Yes, Mataji, thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Thank Mataji Shila Prabhupada ki jai, Guru Bye. Maharaj ki jai, Bye. Anant Koti Vaishnav Brind ki jai. Bye. Bye.